Welcome to another bonus podcast. My name is Thalia, one of the pastors on staff at Northview, and I am joined by two of my friends today. Crystal's with me all the time. Yes, hello. Pastor of Women here. Mm -hmm. And Nancy. Nancy, it's been a long time. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be here. Tell people a little bit about you. It's been a while. Yes. Um, My name's Nancy, obviously. I'm Andy Steiger's wife. That's my biggest claim to fame. (laughs) No, it's not. uh, (laughs) And I get to work here in the office with uh, Philly and Crystal in the with Apologetics Canada. I do it admin work with them. So So Andy has a few hats. Tell us a little bit about his hats. Yeah, he is the pastor of young adults here at Northview. And also he's the director of Apologetics Canada and that we work out of the offices um, Mm -hmm. and under the ministry of Northview. And Andy's actually also working on his PhD. So he's and he is a dad and a (laughs) husband and all those things. So a treehouse builder. Yes. And a deck builder (laughs) and uh, loves to do renos and all those good things. So it's always busy in the Steyer house. And and my job is to kind of keep all the bits rolling. So yes, you have a huge support role over there. Yeah. But it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's nice to see you kind of emerge out of the post-conference, mm-hmm. though. Yes. Like your spring is always so busy. Yes. We just kind of see Nancy ramp up to mm-hmm. the beginning of March and then yeah. slowly ramp down. Yeah. <laughs> and and then, it feels good. It feels yeah. so good to be human and, well, to be normal again. Yeah. yeah. You know, to come out of that busy season and be able to do stuff like this. So mm-hmm. yeah. I enjoy it. That's good. Yeah. Okay. We have a couple of updates before we start our podcast topic today. One update I thought I'd give you is that we have a couple of our Northview young adults who are also participating on a tour in the UK with Wren Collective. Mm -hmm. So they have their own band called the Trinity Worship Project because they're a band out of Trinity Western University. And so if you want to download their tunes on iTunes or Spotify, it is so great. I've been listening to their songs. Yes, we were talking about it even last night, our community group. We have a young adults community group and they're all raving about Tiana. Yeah. Oh, Tiana's amazing. Yes. And Mitchell. Yeah, a couple of Northview kids and then a couple of just other people from other churches. Awesome. Yeah. Is yeah. Johnny with them as well? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. So Johnny jumped away from Jen, his daughter's wedding oh. and just flew right to London. So I've seen on Instagram and Facebook his little posts of his little places that he's been. Johnny's our pastor of worship. Mm-hmm. And so he's with this group because he's been teaching them at Trinity Western yes. this past year. And so yes. he's following them now in UK, leading them. Yeah. Yep. There's another man wearing several hats. He's yeah. also working on <laughs> yeah. his doctorate, right? That's true. Yeah. And that's his home turf because he spent lots of years in ministry mm-hmm. in the UK. So it's kind of fun for him. I think he toured around a lot yeah. when mm-hmm. he was out there. So mm-hmm. I think this is fun for him to bring a bunch of young adults there. Yeah. Yeah. The second update is that um, next year in women's ministry, we are going to be studying the book of Exodus. And so what we're encouraging people to do, if you want, a lot of people come to us and say they want a bit of accountability over summer to do some kind of reading, to stay in God's word. So we're going to publish a little summer Genesis study so people can read through the book of Genesis in preparation for studying Exodus next year. And so we're going to have two get-togethers, one at the end of July, one at the end of August, where anybody that wants to can come together and we're going to talk about the first half of Genesis at the end of July and the second half of Genesis at the end of August. And just, um, yeah, have some accountability for being in God's word, but not be meeting weekly. Yeah. So that's uh, something to keep your eyes open. We'll have stuff published on Facebook and on Instagram when their resources are ready. And we'll start beginning of July for that. That's cool. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our topic today, we are going to talk about guilt <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's just leave already. I know. <laughs> I meet with a lot of women who constantly feel guilty. There's this consistent, nagging, plaguing guilt mm-hmm. hanging over them. And I don't think a lot of us examine why we feel guilty or even if we should feel guilty. We just kind of feel this cloud of guilt and we just sort of um, it just feel under this cloud. Like a big weight. A big right? weight. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I thought... When I was a kid, I used to feel guilty a lot. It was kind of a perfectionism thing. But I would describe it to my mom. I said, I feel like I have glue in my stomach. And she thought like I had a medical condition. So she brought me to the doctor. (laughs) But it was this feeling of like being kind of having that churning stomach of not knowing and feeling guilty about things. And I couldn't put my finger on it. So when I learned to identify that, that was helpful. But it's, yeah, that feeling of this feeling under condemnation. Totally. I remember for a lot of years feeling like that should be my middle name, Thalia (laughs) Giltzwatsky, because you always feel like I'm missing people's birthdays and I'm not contact Mm. them on their birthdays and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that and I should this and I should that. And I just constantly felt guilty. Like this would have been me. It isn't so much me anymore. Yeah. As an adult, sometimes it's stuff that's come up in my past 
sometimes comes up and makes me tries oh, yeah. to weigh me down. Yeah, yeah, that's when that guilt or something that you should have dealt like that you have dealt with that suddenly just the, yeah. the guilt of it just comes the back sneak at attacks you. of yeah. the guilt. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about that today. So the first step I would like people to do is to acknowledge the feeling of guilt. And then spend some time examining, why do we feel guilty? Where is our guilt coming from? Yeah, because there's real guilt that is mm-hmm. actually good. Yeah. And then there's false guilt. And I think we don't often realize that there's both. Yeah. And so we need to distinguish between the two. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. First, let's talk about why do we feel guilty? Where does our guilt come from? There's lots of different reasons. Let's kind of work through those. I think sometimes um, social media. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you feel guilty. Yeah. Especially as a mom. You know, you spend time and you see what other moms are doing. And, yeah. Oh, why am I not doing that? I'm only doing this. And you just feel so guilty. Totally. About what you should be doing or haven't done or, yeah. So that's that cultural pressure mm-hmm. of my kids should be doing baseball and music and being in the choir and serving and, 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 and I'm falling short as a mom. I had one teacher ask me how many extracurricular activities I had my son in, and I apparently didn't have him in enough. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. no. I was like, back off. <laughs> she totally was like, this is, she, this is the standard, and you're not meeting yeah. it. Yeah, that was a tough one for me to work through. Yeah. 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 yeah so I think that's part of like comparing ourselves to others, right? We have mm-hmm. kind of what we think is good, but then other, we see other people doing other things. And so that becomes, we feel guilty that we're not living up to kind of their standards. Totally. Yeah. And there's a huge desire to please others or to be liked by others, loved by others. So mm-hmm. we want to do what others think that we should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what other people think is valuable. <laughs> Whatever yeah. people think is valuable. Yeah. yeah. And helping people, right? You want to be yeah. out there providing people and have you help that person who's at home, you know, and brought them a meal and that person a meal and that person a meal. And <laughs> before you forget it, you get to feed your own well, family. And yeah. on top of that, we should be really fit and we should be taking oh. care of our yard and we should be driving a certain kind of vehicle and we should be doing certain kind of vacations because... Mm. Other people say that we should be going to Disneyland and then we should also go camping, but you should also travel overseas and you should do a family mission trip. And, you know, lots of shoulds. That's like (laughs) a common denominator. Yeah. 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 And I think within the Christian culture, there's so there's like that's cultural. And then within Christianity, there's a whole nother level of shoulds, like Mm -hmm. all the different legalisms that kind of creep in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you should not have a tattoo and you should not drink alcohol and you should not ever go to a bar and you should not. Uh, you know, add it like the whole legalism kind of aspect and what other Christians think, think other Christians should be doing or not doing. Yeah. And when you show up to church, you should all be real nicely looking and yeah. 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 Shouldn't wear a ball cap and you shouldn't, yeah. you know, wear ripped jeans. And I, like there's just all these layers of things we add on to what people should and shouldn't do in the church. Yeah. You should be in community group and you should be in Bible study. <laughs> And you should serve. You should serve, you know, in children's ministry, in greeting committee. Yep. And, and your yeah. kids should be Absolutely. serving with you because mm-hmm. like, that's the best kind of family if parents and kids are all <laughs> serving together, all wearing the T-shirt. <laughs> but uh, if we feel that, we though. We do feel it. And the crazy we see thing, it, we think, wow, how cool is that? They're doing it all together. That's I know. so cool. I know. I wish They're my the family real could Christians. be doing that, yeah. too. I know. But we're just art. So we barely late. made it here on time and actually we're late and yeah. then and oh no we have to leave early the and, car. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that so many of those things are good things like there's nothing wrong with them no it's just we yeah. get them to this level of craziness mm-hmm. yeah where it just drives us bonkers totally yeah and sometimes guilt is a good thing like it's our conscience that convicts yeah. us yeah. and so the holy spirit will bring something to our mind that we have said or done or um, that is directly contrary to God's law. And so yeah. we're going to talk about that later. But sometimes it's our conscience that makes yeah. us feel guilty. And that's important. It's Absolutely. important to listen to it and yeah. not just like sear our conscience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My favorite category I added last night is that we feel guilty because someone said we should feel guilty. Mm-hmm. So I remember it was the first time um, our daughter Ava was like 10 months old and she was still drinking out of a bottle. And somebody said, well, my kids were drinking out of a cup by 10 months old. She shouldn't be on a bottle anymore. And I just felt this it's overwhelming parent teeth. guilt. Like, yeah, oh, my goodness, I've done something bad. <laughs> yeah. Or your parents, your kids should be toilet trained by the time they're one years old. I had yeah. one woman tell oh, me that. No. Like yeah. before they hit their first year birthday. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. never mind the whole phone issue. Like your kids shouldn't have a phone until such and such an age because my kids didn't have a phone and this is bad for them and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. And or, you shouldn't you shouldn't rent a house because that's wasting your money. It's yeah. just sending it away to the landlord you need to own because that's the smart way to be a good steward of God's 
things that he's given you. Yeah. And your kids are going to be wrecked if they go to public school. So you really should homeschool them or be in private school. Mm-hmm. A lot of condemnation about school choices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, even condemnation about you homeschool, your kids aren't, you know, socially, gonna be socially enough, <laughs> uh, social enough. They're not going to have any. Yeah. They're not going to know how to have friends or how to. But yeah. Yeah. Or no. if you choose to you buy your way. kids a car or help them with their education, like, no, no, kids should stand on their own two feet and buy their own car and pay for their own education. And, and that's fine if that's gas. what you decide. Yeah. yeah. But it's not wrong if another family decides to do something different yeah. or you should go. Taylor is on a roll <laughs> here. Lay it all out. <laughs> well, you think, of the family, <laughs> you think of the families that feel this constant pressure every summer that they have to join their extended family camping in whatever town. Yeah. And instead, one summer they decide they want to go somewhere else with just their own little family and do like, I don't know, they want to go to Hawaii or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's mm. bad. You should join the family camping like we always do. do. Yeah, heaven forbid something else comes up and you, <laughs> or you go visit the other family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh that family's yeah. getting together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like the levels of yeah. guilt is just stunning. Mm-hmm. And we can pile it on each other. We can. And we are not very grace-based with each other. No. no. Okay. So we have all kinds of reasons and probably our listeners can add more to that list. All kinds of reasons why we should feel, why we feel guilty. But when we feel guilty, what are some of the ways that we respond typically? Not we, the three of us always, but we in general, how do we respond? Well, I think we'll try to appease people. We want to make them happy. So we'll say yes, or we'll agree to things that we don't necessarily want to do or feel like it's right for us, but just to, in order to, yeah, stop ourselves from being in a situation where anyone looks down on us or has a reason. So we'll say yes, maybe where we should. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Doormat syndrome. Yeah. 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 And you could even have the opposite response where you just... Like you curl up and you just feel paralyzed because yeah. you just, there's so much that you should be doing yeah. that you, you just can't move forward because yeah. you don't know what to do, where to start, you know, where to get to all the things that you should be doing. And so totally. you just like hide you yeah. Know? or yeah. else like totally rebel. Like I know some people mm-hmm. that have grown up with that kind of legalism and they just like their hand is out and they're saying no to any kind of um, direction on their life or anyone telling them anything what to do because they're just so tired of having that kind of pushed on them, Mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. yeah. I know people that are so um, under that cloud of guilt and condemnation that they self-medicate. Yeah. Like they'll go much farther and faster with fitness, like just to block out the the sounds or they play music really loudly or they... um, you know, drugs, alcohol, just to kind of numb that, those feelings of condemnation and people's expectations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just, I mean, if it's, we just sweep it under the carpet, like it's nothing, right? I mean, some things you need to throw off and some things you need to deal with, right? If the guilt's true and, and makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we just want to ignore it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We want to deny it, rationalize it, justify it. Totally. Yeah. We try harder. Yeah. well, I can do it then. If you think I should, then I will. And I'll add on other things too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will be the super mom and the super wife and the super servant in church. I don't and, want anyone to be able to point fingers at me and say, I'm yeah, not. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I can do it all and I can add that too. <laughs> and I'm like, no, not me. But anyway. <laughs> okay. So we feel guilty. We think we know why we feel guilty. So now what? I think that's when we need to pause and yeah. figure out if it's true guilt yeah. Or false guilt. So let's talk about the definitions. True guilt. What is that? Um, like there's a difference between like conviction and condemnation. So I'd say conviction is like true guilt. It's like when the Holy Spirit brings something to mind or scripture, you're reading scripture mm-hmm. and you realize, oh, this is God's standard and I have not lived by his standard. And so I have, he says, do not steal and I have stolen. Or yeah. he says, do not commit adultery and I've committed adultery. Or yeah. all these things that are clear commands in scripture. And conviction uh, is from the Holy Spirit. And there's also, there, it always leads us to something. Like yeah. it leads us to a positive action. Like, okay, because I feel this, God says I can repent and I can be, uh, be forgiven and I can walk forward and I yeah. may need to repair a relationship, but there's like a, a way forward. Yes. Whereas false guilt, condemnation, I think is like, it makes me feel like of being like in quicksand or like a mud puddle or like, yeah. a, like there's just no way out. It's just kind of, you're in there, there's muck all around you. You can't figure out exactly why there's not a clear way forward yeah. It's just kind of a revolving mm-hmm. um, messiness. Yeah. So we would say true guilt would be areas of sin. And yeah. We would know that by studying the Bible, knowing God's word, because lots of people tell us what they think is sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't wear ripped jeans and you shouldn't wear makeup and you, I don't know, whatever yeah. you want to add in there. And they all say that's sinful. Like, no, no, that's not biblical. 
So let's go back to the Bible and study it and figure out if it's true guilt or not. Yeah. Yeah. So this verse that uh, you wrote here, Thaley, I think is a good one to read. Mm -hmm. um, it's 2 Corinthians 7, 8 to 10. And this is Paul talking to the church in Corinth. And he's told them a bunch of things that they're doing wrong. Um, and he says, for even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, although I did regret it, for I see in it that my letter grieved you, though only for a little while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, because they felt guilt, they felt pricked, mm -hmm. they felt convicted, mm -hmm. but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us, for godly grief produces repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Yeah. And I love that picture of like God, he said, I'm, I'm not sorry that I wrote you this letter where I confronted you about things because that actually produced in you a godly grief that yeah. led you to repent and led you to be restored in relationship with each other and with me and with God. Yeah. And so there's a godly grief that does that for us. I think this is what Christians need to do with each other, gently yeah. and kindly and privately if possible, where we say, hey, you know, that tone of voice, that attitude, that action was actually sinful and... Mm -hmm. I think that needs to change because yeah. of God's, what he says in the Bible. Yeah. So, and we hope that people will understand that and then will confess their sin and repent and go forward. Yeah. yeah. We just had a little conversation about that in the car. <laughs> well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But right, doing it as a parent, right? How mm -hmm. are you, how are you talking to them about things that, you know, are yelling, screaming, you yeah. know, or are you, you know, having a, like, confronting them with their sin, but then saying, you know, how are we going to move forward, right? Yeah. And how is this impacting our family and each other and how, you know, so that you help them to see and, and walk through their sin, right? And yeah. confess it and move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's practicing that in the little sins, because when the bigger sins come up, which most of us fall into at some point or other, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. So Nancy, you and I were talking earlier about um, some of the bigger sins that people feel in their past they've committed, and it's just hovering over them like this horrible it cloud of guilt. rises up again, and, yeah. it, and it brings to your mind maybe an event, or you see someone, and you're reminded of something that you've done in your past, and you've dealt with it already, but it comes up again every once in a while, because it's, it's a significant and enough, you know, moral failure or something where you, a, a moment unwise where you, decision or, an yep. unwise decision or something. Yep. And so, you know, you have to remind yourself, okay, I already confessed that. Yeah. God's already forgiven me for it. He's removed it from me. Yeah. As far as the East is from the West, it's gone. And I need to move on. I need to figure, rem remind why, what, what, how I move forward and what yeah. would have been the right choice and how I don't make those choices anymore and what I do instead. And then just push it back, right? Yeah. And yeah. every certain things, you know, at different times come up again. And, and you just have to remember, keep on saying that to yourself, speaking truth into your life, but God's forgiveness yeah. and, and his graciousness. So Nancy, you and Andy are very involved with the young adults. What kinds of past sins do you see in the young adults that people are really struggling with? I think um, there's been any like sexual sin or um, abortion or... Um, even just damaged relationships, you haven't handled a relationship well. Yeah. Um, I think those things I think are are pretty huge that it comes up because it it impacts you know our future relationships yeah. and and how I think those things can potentially be super like something that will rear its head again. Yeah, yeah. And I think <clears throat> Satan's ploy in those kind of situations is if he can't maybe cause us to get away from our faith or whatever, he can cause us to kind of live under this cloud of condemnation, yeah. feeling like, oh, God didn't really forgive that, or I can't really mm. move on, or that was yeah. too big for God, or, mm. um, yeah, just that feeling, again, of being mired by it. And I think mm -hmm. that's when you, what you said is exactly right, um, Nancy, that we just need to remind ourselves of the fact that, like, Colossians 2 is such a great passage, talks about, like, all that legal record of debt that we owe is like yeah. been nailed to the cross yeah. and it's there and mm -hmm. Christ has paid for it and it's taken care of and he's delivered us Colossians 1 he's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son because of what he's done not because we're so great not because we've kind of hit this this merit you know that we've done everything right but just because of what he's done and we need to just operate in that truth and live in it and yeah. not allow Satan to just sidetrack us by his lies because that can make us so ineffective if we just continue to believe the lies that we can't be forgiven or something's beyond his forgiveness. Yeah, I think the hard one is when you're currently struggling with something. Like mm. you have a current area in your life that you know you're not handling right and that it is sinful and it constantly, and you're, you're struggling, yeah. right? And there is a level of guilt and that's yeah. 
true guilt, yeah, right? right? Because you should be feeling guilty because your behavior or whatever your choice is and you need to make, you need yeah. to repent, you need to overcome. Yeah. And, and so I think, but I, but I think you have to remember he forgives, yeah. right? And so we, we come and we are, we repent and we, and we move forward and then we set up accountability, but yeah. we set up things in our life so that we can move beyond that sin, right? Yeah. So that maybe, we can overcome it. Maybe yeah. bring people into this picture mm-hmm. that can help us and walk alongside us yeah. and pray for us. And mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And there are programs and there are counselors and there's care pastors and there's all kinds of people that can walk alongside you. One young woman came to meet with me and she had an area of sin that she was struggling in and she couldn't even speak it. She had written it out on her phone and she handed me her phone so I could read it. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I just smiled at her. I said, yeah, welcome to the club. Like lots of us have struggled, currently struggle with that. Yep, I understand that. I've been there myself. And just she just looked at me with her eyes wide and just a breath of like, ah, I've never told anyone that. Yeah, um, oh, sad. Yeah. Please. So many times we've had conversations too, where I've told you about something that's happening in our in our family and our lives, and you're like, "Yeah, that's like we do with that too." And you're like, "I'm like, okay, like this. I'm not the only <laughs> no. one, and this isn't abnormal, and this no. isn't." So it's so good if there is something to find someone who you can confidently or yeah. confidentially share it with. You someone know, you that, trust, yes. someone that's going to listen to you. Someone's mm-hmm. going to walk alongside you. Mm-hmm. And not make you feel bad that that's an area <laughs> yeah. of struggle. That says, yeah, that's that's normal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we can move and we can, this is how maybe I dealt with it, mm-hmm. you know, and you're, you're going to get, you're going to get over it. It's going to happen. Totally. Yeah. And even yeah. if you haven't dealt with that specific thing, just that normalization feeling that that's the Christian life. Like yeah. we're not going to be sinless until we get to heaven. So no. don't expect it here, yeah. but let's be willing to confess, repent, move on kind of take God's grace upon us and like every hour of yeah. every day until you are have no more breath like yeah. I tell people even in the care home you're gonna have to do this one <laughs> you day have to repent <laughs> yeah every and, hour of every yeah. day like it, it's just a constant uh, like I told one lady it's like going through the car wash your car is dirty with sin and every hour of every day you have to go through that car wash car wash and ask God to cleanse you you confess your sins he cleans you up he forgives you and off you go again his mercies are new every morning Lamb Lamentations 322. And you just keep going back through that car wash. There's one on every blog. You just keep going. There's no limit. You don't run out of tokens. <laughs> no. No. No, you don't. no. God doesn't give us like 20 tokens no. when we yeah. become Christians. No. Yeah. My dad had given me that picture years and years ago. He's just, he had that picture of my hands going round in circles like a scrubber, like when you go through a car wash. He just said, you have to constantly go through the scrubbers. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's even what Jeff was said on the Jude passage this past Sunday about you are kept, mm-hmm. but you need to keep on. Yeah. You need to keep, keep yourself. Keep yourself in the faith, yeah. right? So that you're sealed by the Holy Spirit in your salvation, but then you need to work out your salvation, right? So yeah. there's this, you've been saved, but you, you need to continue, you need to work out. Sanctification yeah. is this process, this continual process, and we will not be fully sanctified until... We die and we go to heaven. We die and Jesus returns. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. False guilt. This is the area where I think a lot of people struggle. Yeah. This is that unjustified condemnation. Mm -hmm. It's not true. I would say it needs to be thrown away or minimized. It's the area where we have freedoms. We can Mm -hmm. choose different things. We can say yes or no. Uh, We can put in healthy boundaries. So let's give some examples to our listeners. So in regards to like personally, um, social media um I, as moms you know we want to we want to show people the great things those moments that our kids that make great achievements right yeah. or those special moments where we have a family day and we're out in the park and and those are the moments that we love to post yeah you know or i went on a we went to disneyland yeah right and i'm going to show you a photo every day, right, <laughs> of, of what I did. And so I think, though, as someone who hasn't or who didn't take their kid to Disneyland, then you go on and you see this and, you're, and you feel guilt. And so for me personally, I just choose not to visit Facebook or Instagram. And if I do, it's very infrequent. And I don't even post a lot because I know if that's how I feel, like how are my posts making other people feel? And so... I don't know. I don't want to be if if you can manage that and you don't feel any guilt about it, then go ahead and post. Right. Like yeah. once again, I'm trying to put post the guilt on people. <laughs> no, by no, yeah, that nothing. Instagram. Right. Yeah. We yeah. have to just manage our own boundaries and how our own things feel. And so for me, I'm like every once in a while I'll go on there and it's not a big mm-hmm. deal. And I've 
spoken truth into my life about what we do and what we are, what, where we're at and what we yeah. can accomplish and what we can do, what we can't do. Yeah. And so then, you know, putting boundaries on how much time you spend on there. Added to that social media would be some parents choose to allow their kids on social media and other people are only at a certain age. Mm-hmm. And so your freedom to do those things, to make those choices. Yeah. 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 And, and even too, as parents, you know, how many things you put your kids in, right? Like, what are your priorities? We don't, our kids aren't in a ton of organized sports. But one thing that we like to do as a family, we like to go out together. But other family, like I have my brothers and sisters, their kids are on the field with their kids. And so that's how they choose to spend their free time right. with their kids and as a family. So great. They spend their weekends there. We don't, that's not what, what works for us as a family. Yeah. And so we do things differently. So you have to figure out what works for you. Totally. What works for you? What's your personality? How are you going to be able to foster good family time? Yeah. Okay, what about like, I met with a woman who felt guilty because she didn't always answer the phone immediately when people call, like she would let it go to voicemail or she wouldn't answer a text right away. It would be a few hours or maybe even the next day. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's normal. You don't have to answer right away. You don't have to respond with a text right away. Sometimes you're sick. Sometimes you're in a meeting. Sometimes Sometimes you need to honor the people that you're with and you don't want to be dishonoring them by being on your phone phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, to be able to put your phone away, you mm-hmm. know, leave it in your purse when you go somewhere. Yeah. Right. And to be fully engaged yeah. with the people that you're with. And the other person on the other side needs to recognize or when you send a po- you send a text and you recognize that that person may just not be available right yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot huge. of people feel no or feel guilty about having to say no to things like, mm-hmm. no, I can't come. We can't come to this family dinner because we have a conflict with the schedule or. Um, I can't go to the hospital to see this friend because I have these other commitments I have to do. And there's a whole lot of guilt around feeling about just saying no, because Uh there's just limitations or like Nancy ditched me on Monday night Bible study (laughs) this last semester. (laughs) But because for good reasons, because Andy's doing his PhD and I just can't be a table leader and take care of my kids when he's gone every night. And, and so you had to say no, but that was exactly what you needed to do yeah. at that time. Yeah. And yeah. it was right? hard. That was a decision that took a lot. I mean, Andy and I talked about it back and forth because I, I've, I've enjoyed that time. And I just, and it was such a hard decision for me to make. But in the end, when I finally made it, I felt released, right? And, yeah. I, and, and Crystal was great. She, there was no guilt laid on. You know, we as, as recipients of the no we can respond and release yeah, people or right. we can heap further guilt yeah, on them. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I really appreciate Crystal's response because it was like, no, I get it, right? That that moment, that past year, something else needed to be a priority yeah. in our family. For me, actually, to be the kind of mom that my kids needed, yeah. right? So that I wasn't overburdened. Yeah. yeah. You know? And we need, yeah, like we only have so many years with our kids. And so we need to be there for them in the best way that we can and those and that might need mean saying no to some things sometimes yeah. we need to evaluate where that guilt is yeah. right and why you do things the way that you do yeah. them right and each family is different mm-hmm. yeah so the other ed- end of the age spectrum i get people who feel guilty because they've realized that it's time to put their parents in a care home but the value from other people is that you should keep them in their own home as long as possible and and that would be nice i can understand that but sometimes they need to be in a care home and so there's that pressure of i'm disappointing all these people because I'm choosing a care home for my aging parents. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful when we respond to people and put our values on their particular situation because it may not suit. Yeah. We really need to try and understand each other, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You um, have people coming to you that are dealing with like emotional and physical abuse, like in their marriage or in their families, and they still feel guilty for kind of standing up for themselves. So what do you say to them? Yeah, that's a really difficult category because as Christian women, Christian women often have this misplaced understanding that to be a Christian woman means you need to take all the emotional and physical abuse. You need to stand there and take it. You need to just deal with it. You need to stay in your home no matter what. You need to not leave the room or not drive off in the car or not go stay at someone else's house for night because you're a Christian woman and the way to love your spouse is to take all their abuse on you. And I sometimes just don't even know what to do with myself when I hear those (laughs) stories because I'm like, it is so okay and right to pursue safety. Yeah, You sometimes need to leave your home and you need to take your kids and go to a different place Mm -hmm. for a night or more. And you need to be able to stand up and say, I I don't want to be treated this way. It is not okay for me to be treated this way. 
Yeah. And women don't get it. And even if it's not a safety issue, we have a right to stand up for ourselves yeah. too within a marriage. We Yeah. Well, yeah. I say emotional and physical safety because sometimes yeah. when uh, a spouse comes home and they're just belittling and berating and yeah. on and on and nagging and won't leave you alone, it's okay to say, hey, I just need to step away. I'm going to go to a different room. I'm going to go for a drive. Like you might not be able to because you have kids, but in your depending on your circumstances, if you need to take a break from that constant barrage of yuck, it's that's good and right. And But women feel like they need to stay there and take it. Yeah. But um, I remember talking to one person who had an alcoholic parent and that alcoholic parent would often phone and just have a long bullying phone call. And this Christian person felt like they needed to stay on the bullying phone call because that's the way to love yeah. their parent. Yeah. Mm. And I said, no, 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 actually, you can simply have a good conversation for 10 minutes. And when it starts to go sideways, you can say, I'm so sorry, mom, I need to get off the phone now. And then but this Christian person up. was completely, <laughs> yeah, 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 completely yeah. like, what? Oh, that I, sh- that I'm going to feel guilty because that's my mom and I should just listen to her. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, but not if they're like, they shouldn't be sinning on you. Yeah. Same with bullying. Like they'd be bullying text bullying. messages yeah, and bullying, social yeah. media bullying, right? Like, yeah. I was talking to one woman who's, yeah, a person who was sending her all kinds of really harsh text messages. And yeah. I said, it's okay to block. Like yeah. Yeah. to send a message saying that I'm just not, I'm not going to talk about this right now, but. I can't deal with this on text and yeah. I'm not going to receive these messages. No, and you don't even actually have to read them all. No. If you start reading the text, it's a really long one and it's all going awful. Yeah. You don't have to continue to put that in your brain. You can delete it. You can unfriend someone. Yeah. Right? on. I mean, yeah. as You can as mute the conversation. Right? Or, yeah. You can block yeah. it. You can leave the room. You can do all these things. Because like I often use the example, if I walked into a grocery store and the cashier started insulting me and swearing at me and being mean and pointing fingers, I would walk away from the grocery store. Or I would call the manager or I would do something. I wouldn't stay there and take it because I'm a Christian woman. Yeah. Like that's not how you help the situation. No. You actually need to stop the person who is acting sinfully. So why do we allow it in our homes then if you wouldn't allow it at a grocery store? I so, think there's this, this culture of, well, because well, we, we want to preserve our marriages. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. And that's what we want to do, but yeah. but there needs to be, we need to deal with the muck that's in there so that yeah. the marriage can last. And yeah. we've been encouraged to submit, which is in scripture, to talk about wives submitting to husband, but it says as to the Lord. And yeah. so it's as to things that Christ would ask for you, yeah. right? It's not as to sin. It's not as to mm-hmm. belittling and as to all these different things. No. Now, it doesn't mean that women never have a part to play in ramping up some, like sometimes yeah. husbands get mad because wives have been super passive aggressive and have been super, yeah. like, we may need to own our own muck yes. in yes. the midst of it. And we yeah. may need to have someone sit down with us and say, well, how are you? Are you contributing to this? Yeah. Are you True. not? Like, it's not always that other person's fault, 100%. But at no. the same time, we need to learn how to be healthy in that. Yeah, absolutely. So we can talk about that further if you want to come and meet with me. We have all kinds of resources and Christian counselors that work through these. This is a normal issue at Northview. So that's partly why this topic comes up, because it is so normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we cope with the feelings of guilt in healthy ways? Um, Well, I think one way is if you were in God's Word regularly, if we're in study, if we're in um, knowing God's Word, we're going to be able to identify when it's true guilt and false guilt. So I think that's one thing is being able to identify, to step back and identify, like you said, like, what what am I feeling and why? And is this true? Um, And then I think talk to God honestly about our emotions, like run to God with them Mm -hmm. and say, this is what I'm feeling. What, you know, how does it line up with scripture? What do I need to know about you? And like praying through it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I often tell people to read 1 Samuel chapter 1, story of Hannah. And she is in very difficult situation. She's one of two wives and she's barren. She doesn't have a child. And she goes to the temple and she is pouring out her heart to God. I would encourage you to read that. Listen to all the emotion pieces in there. She's a woman troubled in spirit and pouring out her heart to God. And I want us to be women who in private, whether you drive or you walk or you're in your locked bathroom, go and pour out your honest feelings to God. Tattle to him about the situation. At least for me, when I pour it out verbally, then I can hear my bad attitude and my bad <laughs> tone of voice and my wrong motives. And I can say, oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. Uh, I have some parts to own here, and I'm sorry. And I, I have to do it out loud. I actually can't pray quietly in my head very effectively because I, I need to process it out loud. So that might be you, and you could try that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I think, and then, you know, if there is conviction, if the Holy Spirit convicts you, like you said, you got to own it. Yeah. And confess it. Yeah. Repent, you know, and then think about, you know, well, what is that? And is it something that just needs a one-time correction or is it something that you need to get support around? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes we need to talk to a Christian friend about it. Like sometimes like we've said, oh, that's a normal thing <laughs> after yeah. we've talked to somebody else or it's not normal and we actually need to deal with it. So I think helping that perspective sometimes is super helpful. Yeah. I've encouraged people to read the Boundaries book by Cloud and Townsend. Um, they just did a revamp on the book. Mm-hmm. It's really helpful because sometimes we feel guilty when we need to put in healthy boundaries, but... That is a very important part of life to put in healthy boundaries. So I'd encourage you to possibly read that book or come talk to me on that. Mm -hmm. And I think, Nancy, you had said to me earlier that sometimes we can't totally throw away the feeling of guilt. Like it just sits there at a low level. We understand that, but it's not crippling us. You're kind of trying to minimize it. Mm -hmm. I think we did. We already talked. Sorry, we might have. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I I think we just when it when it comes up again and again, you need you need to remind yourself of the Mm -hmm. truth that you've repented with it of it that you've dealt with it, and then and then put it behind you, right, and move forward. Yeah, and not let it stew. Uh, on you and in you and then cripple you and yeah. and, and weigh you down, right? Because yeah. the guilt does feel like a burden, right? It, like you yeah. said, the glue in your stomach, right? Yeah. yeah. It feels something that it affects how we, you know, it affects our joy. Mm-hmm. It affects, you know, how we interact with others and, and how we can be effective in the things that are good and right and that we should do, yeah. right? And, the, and that we can be a part of. I think too, you know, when, when you're feeling guilty, about false guilt, like when you're feeling, and I think, you know, even you need to share that with others, yeah. right? So that yeah. someone could speak truth into your false guilt. And right? yeah, we can laugh about these little things <laughs> yeah. like we just did about all yeah. these stupid things that we felt guilty about, about not toilet training before we're one or all these things, right? It <laughs> yeah. helps yeah. to just have a good laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then to evaluate, you know, why did I make the decisions that I've made? Why do we do, why does our family do this way? Why do I say no to this and yes to this? And just reaffirm, you know, what your priorities are in your family and in your life and, and just be confident in, in the way that, in the decisions that you make and why you've made them. Right. And, and trust that, you know, things can go either way. You could, you could have done this or you could have done that. You could have gone private school. You could have gone homeschool. You could have gone public school, but you made a choice as a family to do this and we can always reevaluate stuff totally we can always reevaluate and say yeah. you know what i think that what i like their perspective there's yeah. some some wisdom in that maybe i can apply a bit of that yeah. into my family into yeah. my life and yeah. and maybe we can adjust the way that we do things yeah or i might have made a mistake there mm-hmm. well yeah. most yeah. mistakes okay. can yeah. be fixed yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i think it's important to know um uh, the character of God too in the midst of this because I think sometimes we feel like God's looking down on us and mm-hmm. God's disappointed in us and God's like oh shoot yeah. you're confessing this to me again like what is your problem and why <laughs> yeah. aren't you getting over this yeah. and we have a picture of God that he's just out to kind of get us like Santa Claus right who's naughty who's nice yeah what are you on, which list are you on and like we you quoted Psalm 103 earlier but as far as the east is from, from the, the west. west but the other part of Psalm 103 I love Um, 13 to 15, it says, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Mm -hmm. Like God knows our limitations and he loves Mm -hmm. his kids. Like we love our kids. We know they're not perfect yet, but we love our kids as they muddle through the muck of elementary school and middle school, whatever, right? Because we just love them. We have compassion on them. God does for us too. Yeah. He's not out there sitting up there judging us and being so angry and disappointed. No. And while we're on this earth, his mercy doesn't run out. You can go back to him thousands upon thousands of times, confessing and repenting and picking yourself up and going back again with God's help. That's that's the point of being a Christian is we have God's help. And if you look at the salvation story, right, he pulled out the Israelites who were habitual, miserable failures. (laughs) He still pursued them. Even when they failed again and again and again. And then he knew and he knew they were never going to make it. He knew they were never going to achieve what they need. And so then he made a plan. Yeah. He made a plan for Jesus, right? So that because he knows that that's what we need. We 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 can't do it on our own. We do. Yeah, and we need to just constantly throw ourselves on that and yeah. his forgiveness. And yeah, yeah, that's a great place to end. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me pray for our listeners. Okay, Lord, thank you so much that we had the privilege of being able to do this podcast. We pray that you would um, comfort our listeners with the fact that you love them, that you created them, that you know them, 
that you know where they fail, and yet you are ready and waiting for us to run to you and say, I'm so sorry, Lord, and to confess our sins to you and to other people and to keep walking forward. Lord, your mercies are new every morning, as you say in Lamentations 3. And so, Lord, we just run to that verse. We run to the fact that you are a wonderful counselor in Isaiah 9, 6. Lord, we just ask that you would listen to us and that you would help us as we go along this difficult journey of life. Mm-hmm. Thank you for this chance to talk about this topic. And we ask that you would um, be with our listeners in whatever tasks they have today, and the things they have, that they would run to you wherever they are. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us.